Hello everyone, welcome to another one of my lead code videos. In this one we'll do lead code 909, snakes and ladders. This is today's daily challenge. And this is a very interesting problem, so let's go through it. This is pretty long over here, I'll just summarize it. So basically we're given a board which is n by n, so we're guaranteed that it's a square. And, and the board is represented by a 2 by 2 matrix, right? With This is the first row, second row, and so on. And the value of the matrix is negative one if it's just like an empty square. And the value of the matrix is equal to the destination if it's like a ladder or a snake. So in this case, the value at this cell of the board would be 15, signifying that if you go here, there's a ladder to 15. And possibly the value at this part of the board would be 13, signifying that if you come here, you'll go to 13. And note that the board is spiral, right? So from the bottom, you go here, then you go up, and then you go here, and then you go right, and so on. So basically we're given the starting point, and we need to determine what's the minimum amount of moves you can take to get to the end of the board. And if we can't, if there's no way to get to the end of the board, then we return negative one. And obviously our possible moves are based on the roll of the dice, so you could either move one step, two steps, all the way up to six steps, because the dice has you know six uh, parts to it. So what will be our approach to solve this problem? Okay, so first let's imagine, you know, we have a, a board. So how are we going to, you know, go about this, uh, this board, right? So we can represent basically each uh, cell in the board as a node in the graph, right? So let's say one is a node in the graph. And then from one, you can either go to maybe two, uh, three, and four. And let's say four has a, actually a ladder to, let's say, 20. So maybe this becomes 20, right? Um, and obviously there can be six, but for simplicity illustration purposes, I'll just write three, right? And then imagine from 20, you could go to 21. And then let's say 22, uh, instead of 22, there was a ladder on 22 that goes back to three. So basically 20 would point back to three, right? Because 22 has a, sorry, a snake that goes back to three. And then let's say there's 23, right? And then let's say two has like, from two you can go to three, which is over here. You can go to four. And then let's say from five, there's a ladder that goes to 23. So five would go all the way here. So basically you can see that because of the snakes and ladders, there can be cycles in this graph. These are obviously directional arrows, right? So. Uh, you could have a cycle, let's say like one, which goes to 20, which goes to three. Uh, so this becomes a cycle, right? And then um, you can be stuck, if you use a traditional method, you can be stuck in kind of an infinite recursion. So that's something we have to be careful about here. So given this nature uh, of this problem, basically we have to find, okay, how do we eventually get to, let's say this was a board of up to 25, right? So let's say this was 24, and this was 25 over here, how do we get to 25 in the shortest possible uh, way? So basically translating this problem is like given a graph with cycles, right? Find the shortest path from the source to the destination, right? And the algorithm to do that is basically BFS, right? So we'll model a graph where from each node, we'll connect where we can go from that node, right? And then once we have that graph, we'll just use the BFS algorithm, breadth per search, to keep track of each level and get to the destination. If once we get to the destination, we'll return how many steps we took. And obviously we'll keep track of what nodes we visited, right? So for example, if we visit two and then we visit three and then we visit 20, which goes back to three, we'll know not to you know, explore three again because we've already visited it, like it's already been traversed. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and code that solution. So as you know, with a BFS solution, the first thing we need to do is maintain a queue for our current level. Now that we have a queue, we'll just do while not current level dot is empty. We will again initialize the queue for our next level. And then at the end, we'll set our current level equal to our next level. And then inside here is where we'll actually create a loop to go through the current level and pull until it is empty, right? Now, initially, obviously, if we find our target, we'll be returning within this loop. So at the end, we'll return negative one. That means we didn't find our target. 
and obviously initially we should add a zero to our current level or sorry one to our current level because we want to start at uh, one and what we'll be putting in the queue is the, actually the integer numbers and we'll write a function that will you know given the number find the index in the board uh, so that will be a function over here that will say you know get at int board int cur so basically given a number it will tell you know whether it's just the number itself or whether that number has a snake or ladder to somewhere else right so we'll come back to this in a second going back here we also need a set of visited because we remember we need to keep track of what we visited so that we don't visit it something twice and every time we add something to the queue we'll also add it to the visitor just to make sure we won't add it again to the queue and then over here what we'll first do is we'll pull our current node so now that we've got our node we'll try to explore everywhere we can go from node right so we'll say for int i equal to node plus one because that's when we can go if we go one place forward i less than equal to node the minimum of node plus six and target right so either we can go six places forward or we stop if we already reach the target and then i plus plus right so we'll go from node plus one to node plus six or target whichever comes uh, sooner and then inside here what we want to do is we want to see okay for i right so int next is equal to get at board comma i so we'll get the value of the i number in the board right so if it's negative one that means it doesn't jump to anywhere right so if next is equal to negative one that means it doesn't jump to anywhere so we'll just say next equals i itself but if next is not negative one then next will contain the value where we need to jump to right so then here we'll check okay if visited dot contains next so we've already if we've already visited next then we'll just continue we'll check first if actually if our next is equal to target right so if we've already reached the target then we'll just return you know steps plus one right because uh, this is going to be for the next level so it's steps plus one and of course we have to keep track of our steps so we'll say in steps equals zero and over here we'll say steps plus plus when we move to the next level right so here we'll return steps plus one because it's the child of the current step now once we've done that uh, if it's not also equal to target then we'll go ahead and add it to our queue so we'll add it to our next level uh, this node and then we'll add it to visited as well right because every time we add to the queue we also add to visited so that's our basically our BFS algorithm so one thing we haven't done is we've, we haven't declared our target so let's go ahead and do that real quick so we'll have our target equal to board dot length times board dot length because that's n squared and we know that the board is a square so that's our target now let's come to this function the get add function so basically how will we solve this get add function right so we need to first convert cur to like the row and column indexes of the board right so we'll have some row equals something and some call equals something right and at the end we'll just return board at row call right now the question is given cur which is like one two three four five six in the spiral way how do we get row and column right so first let's solve row because that's the easier one so we know that you know there's six one to six is here seven to twelve is here thirteen to eighteen is here and so on right so basically it's you know the the cur divided by six right so for this one cur divided by six will be zero one two three and so on right so cur divided by six will be the the how far from the bottom up it is right but one thing to note that that's based on zero index so we need to um, minus one from cur first so that we get the zero based index right so instead of one it will be zero to five right and that way when we do cur over six we'll get zero for all of these and then for six to eleven then we'll basically get 
uh, one and so on, right? So curve over six will tell us how much from the bottom we need to go up, right? So to get our row, we'll basically do our bottom most index, which is board dot length minus one, right? That's the bottom most index minus this curve over six that tells us how, how far up to go. And that's our row, right? Now our column is the more interesting thing, right? So if you notice the, on, the e, on the even rows, the column starts from the left and goes to the right, right? And then on the odd rows, the column starts from the right and goes to the left, right? So let's first determine if this curve over six, is it even or odd, right? So uh, let's store this in a variable. So I've stored row offset in a variable and use that here. So now in the call, what we need to see if our row offset is even, which mod two is equal to zero, then our column is just basically going to be cur mod six. Actually not six, this will be board dot length because that the, the six is only for this example board. So it's going to be cur mod board dot length, whatever the size of the board is. And then otherwise, so cur mod board, board dot length is basically how many we have on the row we're at, right? So otherwise, if it's an odd column, that means the same cur mod board dot length is going from the other side, right? So th what's the index of the last one? It's going to be the same thing, board dot length minus one. That's going to be the index of the last column since it's a square. And then minus the cur mod board dot length. So that's going to be our um, index on the odd rows. And then at the end, we'll return board at row and column. So that's basically it. Let's run it and see how this does. Of course, a compile error. I need to put a semicolon here. Another missing semicolon. Finally accepted. Let's submit. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.